Hi everyone, Emma here. I am getting ready to do the tutorial for the macrame um, bracelets with the waxed cotton cord and I just wanted to, um, I, what I'm starting to do is I'm going to paint these buttons so that's what this tutorial, uh, this part is going to be about, just painting the buttons. But I also wanted to mention a few things. So one, sorry, <laughs> there's a cat hair attached to my camera. Okay, so these um, rolls of cotton cord I got from AliExpress, they were $2 for 80 meters. So that's a really good deal. And they had so many wonderful colors and I love like each one so far that I've opened has been really good I did want to mention that the pink one didn't feel as waxed as the others and I'm not sure about these ones here that I have because I still have the packaging on it but the pink one wasn't as uh, waxed which actually wasn't that big a deal it made it a lot easier to work with and um, when I was sewing the beads on, I didn't wax my thread and it went through so much easier than what I was doing. So I think somebody had mentioned maybe it's the waxed cord that's creating the tension when you're pulling through. And that's exactly what it was. So between the wax cord and waxing my thread, it was just sticking like crazy so that's just a little hint there now I also wanted to point out these wonderful bracelets that I got yesterday I have been wearing this one I even wore it to bed I just love it so much this one here that was really big I I couldn't figure it out from the pictures but this is an ankle bracelet so it is quite a bit larger and I've been wearing this and you can hear it has this sound so when I walk it's hilarious the cats are totally <laughs> freaked out looking at my feet wondering what's going on <laughs> but again I wore this all yesterday and it it hung on really well and I even went for an hour-long walk with it on and it was so comfortable so just uh, just to let you know about those things they were super amazing and let's talk about making mistakes when you order stuff so i've been doing a lot of orders with aliexpress and normally i am super super careful with what i order and making sure there's no shipping charges and unfortunately sometimes i get excited <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I, I've looked at this enough. It's time to just order it. And that's what happened with these. Now, I have to say, these are incredible. They're so beautiful. They're so substantial. But they were expensive. So I paid $6 for 50 pieces. Now, I, you know what? I didn't count them. I should count them. Um, I'll get back to you on that. I'm assuming it's 50 sets. Um, but you know what I shouldn't assume it does look like a lot so I would think it is 50 sets um, because the, here's two four six eight ten so yeah that's definitely 50 sets um, so a few things I, I paid six dollars for the 50 pieces let me just um, get my calculator out here uh, and that's six dollars Canadian so six dollars divided by 50 I should be able to do no that's not right um, I should be able to do the calculation in my head but sometimes when I'm doing these videos I can't so 6.0 is six dollars divided by 50 Okay, so I ended up paying 12 cents a piece for them, which is not too bad. But there was a $6.50 delivery charge. I don't think I've ever paid that much for delivery on anything. So that was a big 
mistake, I suspect, between the large orders and, um, you know, missing it, going in there and thinking, oh my gosh, these are so cool, let me get them. I miss the fact that they had a shipping charge that was that expensive. Now, this was only ordered last week, so it came very quickly. So clearly, I paid for that speed. Um, so let's go ahead. So if I paid 12 cents, that's on average about, I probably paid 20 cents a piece for these if you count the shipping charge that's Canadian that's still a good price for these like I said they're super cool they're really substantial I did look up some videos and I'm actually just looking on the inside here um, so the top part of the shank maybe what I should do is try to clip it um, what I did look up these are sometimes called rivets and I looked up some videos and what they do is they actually cut it down like this to match the size of the letter leather and what I'm thinking is normally those other cheap ones that I had aren't solid all the way through these actually the top part looks like it's hollow but at about that spot there, it looks like it's solid. So in those videos, the guy went ahead and with a better tool than this, with one of those ones that grabs from the top, and it's a really substantial tool, so I have to look into that. Because I think I will be doing more of these. So let's see. I probably shouldn't use these. I might damage them. Yeah, those are my good ones. <laughs> Let me take my crappy ones, <laughs> see if I can cut it with those. So I use these tools, this tool, and you can see how I've damaged them pretty bad with clipping the, um, the loops off of uh, charms. Okay, so let me just... There, so it did... So it is solid further down. So that's actually good because what that's done is on the other ones, it bent everything together and they were became unusable. Let me just quickly show you that. And, you know, if this is something you're not interested in, just fast forward through the video. But it's, it's something that's always fascinated me. So I really want to figure these things out and maybe help somebody else that's interested. So you see this one, this one is actually um, hollow all the way through. So this is what happened when I tried to clip it to the thickness of my leather. All it did was bend it. It didn't actually, let me see if I can go the other way. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's not doing a thing. And I don't want to use my good tools on this. So I was like, ah, oh, this isn't going to work. Yeah. So. Now, maybe with the better tool, it would work on that. So, so that's the scoop on that. Don't make the same mistake I made. Make sure you check your orders. Make sure, you know, if you're paying shipping that you're aware of that and can expect it um i mean i still love these so you know just sometimes making mistakes like that is really valuable because then you don't make mistakes further on with them so these i love so i'm definitely keeping I probably wouldn't get my money back anyway, so there's no point. <laughs> it's like, move on. So this is me moving on. Now, let's paint some buttons. So I have my palette here. This is just a, um, a, a pad that I buy at the art store. And you can 
put paint on it and the reason I'm using this normally I just take it straight out of the tube and paint it onto the button but so this is I'm gonna do a white bracelet with these gorgeous agate stones they're beautiful so I think that'll look really nice what I want to match it with is this gorgeous starfish button but I feel like it would probably still look amazing but I feel like it would look even more amazing with the right color patina on it so I am going to mix uh, pink and I was thinking of this cad red so let me move that I don't want to put paint on my and if all else fails and I don't like these colors what I will do is um, just put white paint over top and see how that works so I am just going to mix you know I want it lighter just put that there and maybe a tick so that's a that cat or is is more orange than anything and I have my palette knife now I could mix a bit of yeah so that gives me a gorgeous look at that so it kind of matches and you could actually do this leave it unmixed and do the two colors and create a bit of a blend I think it needs a little more pink um, yeah yes that's it there looks a bit orange on the screen but we'll see once it's on the button <laughs> I only have two of these buttons left I'm like oh I don't know about this but let's see what we come up with so I'm gonna hold it by the shank and I am just oh go ahead and doesn't matter like if you get it on the top because we're gonna polish this so just pile it on there so this actually looks really nice and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe some of it off and that will give us an idea of what it's going to look like once it's polished so just make sure you don't take off the low points which I've done before and then had to go back and repaint so let me just take a clean piece of paper towel and woo -hoo -hoo, look at that okay oh yeah <laughs> this is gonna be amazing so I've I've seen what it looks like when you take all the stuff off so that's why I'm getting super excited this is exactly what I wanted to do so you see here you can see a bit of the black coming through so I've probably rubbed in there I probably rubbed a little too much with my paper towel so you can just go ahead and reapply it but sometimes the the black coming through is actually nice so just so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to let these dry and with the magic of video we'll come back and see what we come up with and I'm just using a cheap dollar store brush I have some really expensive brushes that I could use but okay so I am gonna 
just rub the total high points of this, which I don't have to do, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and clean off my fingers a bit. Eek. And I am, we're going to go ahead and paint the rest of the buttons. So, um, let me get some more paper towels. Okay, so let's cover these guys up. And there's the pink. So the others I may be able to do. I'm not, that was, uh, there's one more that I'm going to mix, actually. I'll go ahead and um, mix that one. So this is the button I'm going to work on. I pulled out two of every button so you can see the difference between how you buy your buttons and what you can do with them. So this is the color core. It is like a navy blue, but it kind of looks black. So I wanted to pair it with this gorgeous star cut gemstone. And I think it would look amazing with this button, but I want to, um, make this button kind of light colored as well to offset the darkness of this so we can kind of bring out the blue so let's put that aside and what i have is these two colors so instead of um taking white which i have some set aside in case these colors don't work what i've done is picked a blue and that's a primary blue with a light blue and I will adjust it accordingly to see if we can get a nice color so let me wipe my this take that off so it doesn't get on anything wipe off my palette knife nice and just wipe this so I love these um, pallets disposable because then you take the sheet and just tear it off, fold it up, throw it in your garbage. Okay, so I think we will move this over and use this section of the Oh, there was a bit of dry stuff. Just be careful with that dry paint yeah that crap <laughs> falling everywhere <laughs> that is so annoying when you're doing like a really nice painting in the dry stuff <laughs> you got to learn to open these over the garbage can so they fall in the garbage can that one's fine okay so we want this lighter than dark so we're gonna add and i'm mixing way too much here but uh, I used to be really careful and not mix enough. Oh, that looks amazing. <laughs> it looks awesome, like unblended. So you could do that. I'll leave it just slightly unblend. I'm sure once I, oh, I need to clean off my brush. Once um, I start putting it on the button it will blend so if you want to do like a marble look you might have to um, do multiple layers so let's see where'd my button go it's over here so I did one of these with a solid color and oh my god it turned out amazing Yeah, see, I have way too much paint. But this one has uh, quite a large layer of low points. So um, you have to be careful when you're wiping it off and when you're um, 
polishing it because I ended up polishing the middle point, the low point, and it really, it, it took a bit off. So just be careful, aware that there, that's all. I'm just going to take some of this extra stuff off the side. I wouldn't go any further than that because of what I said. I took too much off of that middle point, that low point. So I would just leave it like that. And then let it dry. And when you polish it, it's going to... I mean, you can go ahead and do it now. It's just you're risking some of the paint coming off the bottom layer. So we will put that there with that one. And oh, let me test it against the colors. It is a bit kind of a different blue. I find, you know, blues are really hard to match. So you see... It almost needs more of a navy. But you know what? I have a bunch of these buttons. So let me pull out a different blue and do another button. Just one minute. Okay, this is the this is one of my favorite blues. It's called the Windsor Blue. And you can probably see why. It's so awesome. And so that will match a little better. So let's try that. And I got these buttons at um, from Kelly's Bee Boutique. Super inexpensive. And I am going to wipe my brush off. I don't want to lighten this. And it's interesting. I wanted it light to match this. But this is where you run into problems, so it really matches this a little better. Hmm. Okay, hey, I, at this point, let's just go ahead and we'll do this blue. And if we have to go in later and maybe add a bit of um, white patina into it, like some flex that might match it a little better but i think this is going to look amazing so yeah i got these buttons from kelly's bead boutique super cheap and you can see how you really have to add so this paint might be a different consistency than the other one. It seems to have a bit of a um, translucent effect on the metal. So you can use that to your advantage, but I kind of want a solid. So I'm trying to add lots of paint in the low spots. Let's see what it looks like when I wipe it off. I'm use the same tissue. Ooh, look at that. Oh, wow. Okay. So we may have to do a couple of layers of this one. I'm going to wipe it down. So I don't know if you can see right there in the middle some of it didn't stay and there's a spot right there so I think I'll leave it let it dry and maybe touch it up and see but that looks amazing yeah but so see how it really <laughs> let me see if I can show you both buttons messy business here That's what we have so far. Let me see if I can. There. Okay. So we have a few more to go. 
But I think the others we are going to do straight out of the um, tube so we can go ahead and move that paint so we don't mix our paints. So let me clean my palette knife off. There. Uh, okay. So, just making sure I don't have any paint on my hands. So let's put those aside. That aside. Okay, the next one I want to do. Let's see. This. Let me turn this so I don't get any paint. Okay, this next one is I'm going to do this tan color with these gorgeous beads. I think they're, I want to say agate. Let me move my light over so you can see what I'm doing here. And there, just the lighting. Yeah, so these I think would go really nice. And this is that kind of southwestern filigree with the little flower. I think would look amazing. And it can go for male or female. And I'm trying to do some things that are um, gender neutral. So I'm going to take this uh, raw sienna. And actually I might just put it right on the button and spread it around a little too much paint <laughs> oh a little heavy-handed there yeah okay let's set that down and wipe off my brush <laughs> And, and we're not gonna, I don't think we're going to need this after this. And, you know, remember too, these are um, water-based paints. They're acrylic. So if you really, really don't like what you see, just go ahead and wet them. And take a little brush and brush it off. So... This. I'm still blown away by this. I think it's amazing. There. Look at that. So, definitely a super duper match. Look at that. It helps I'm a painter, so I'm good at picking colors, right? That's funny, I haven't had any color theory, <laughs> which I probably need, but sometimes stuff like that kind of gets you stuck in a certain way of thinking. So I am not afraid to try different things. So let me make sure, oh, there's paint everywhere now. Thank goodness for paper towels. Okay, next one is this one here. This shank feels crooked. Oh. So I bought this orange. I, I'm so, I love orange. <laughs> but it's really hard to match because there's not a lot of stuff to go with it. But I thought I would put these beads. So I think that would look amazing. So I think either... Um, Sorry, I'm so close here. I think either the white or this kind of or you know off white kind of patina that's going on on the bead. So I have um, unbleached titanium, which is like an unbleached white. I'm gonna try that, see how it looks. If I don't like it, I'm gonna go ahead and just do white over top. So let's try that. And 
try to be careful with this one not to squeeze too much. I'll leave it open in case I need it. I should have wore gloves. I'm going to be scrubbing my hands. I think this is going to be perfect. It's It looks whiter than I was thinking. Like the packaging looks really dark. But it's... I really love uh, Buff Titanium. I use it a lot for different things. yeah that's gonna look amazing I'm gonna leave it like that because once I come in with the um, steel wool it just polishes it up perfectly so let's put that there I feel like it opens up the silver like a, a nicer shine to the silver as well even with just doing the um, rubbing it off with the paper towel so I, I think part of it is there's so much shine in the button that uh, you kind of miss. It, it's kind of dulled by the rest of the stuff. So here's an example. So this one is the gray cord. And I'm going to go and I'm going to add these beads to the gray and this button. So I thought I'd use, instead of using gray, I'd use silver and see how that turns out. So let me get my brush. So what I'm going to do is um, I will let these dry. Or actually, I'll use my tool. I have... Um, a craft uh, heat gun that I got for ten dollars on Amazon so I'm gonna go ahead and use that now when you're using your craft gun I'm sure a lot of people have used them just be careful not to hold it too close um, and heat up your button because it's metal it will heat up so for one it'll burn your fingers if you're holding it and the other thing is remember that acrylic paint is actually plastic so if you um, so I'm just gonna pull some of this off if you heat it up it will bubble like you can imagine what plastic does under heat right I learned that the hard way I was drawing some of a, a painting of mine and it bubbled up I was like oh my god what have I done and it's damaged once you do that so just a warning so yeah I'll go ahead and um, look at that. <laughs> that looks amazing uh, yeah but you can see there's a spot there like a little bubble let me see if I can get some more paint in here a little bubble there There's another one there. Just, I mean, this is really nitpicky, but it's how you want to do it. So I'm going to leave that and I'll, that'll just come off with the polishing. So cover this tube up. There you have. Yeah, let's do it this way. Do the so that one looks like it's ready to go, but I will double make sure it's 
super duper dry. Oh, and you can see a little bubble on that one. I might fix that. So, there you go. That's what they look like before they're polished. And I will, um, I will dry these and clean up a bit. And I'll be back and I'll show you how I polish them. And then that'll be it. Before I do that, I wanted to mention the other thing about purchases. I had purchased these uh, head pins that were all jumbled and bent and everything. And just the heads up, there were supposed to be 200 of them. Um, I'd have to count them, but they were actually $3 for 200 So I'm not sure if that is a good deal or not. Um, yeah. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet. I uh, need to think about that. I'm, what I might do, they're super soft, so what I might do is test maybe 10 of each and see how they work. If they work out fine, then again, another lesson learned and move on kind of thing. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got these dry. I did a second coat on this one. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to work out too well because you can really see the texture of the paint as it dried but we'll see and I just wanted to show you some of the other ones that I did that are a bit different so this is a um, sand dollar there that's beautiful so um, yeah this one yeah I think I did polish it with the steel wool used a different color. Now I do want to mention because I'm using acrylic paint, acrylic paint is fine. You don't have to varnish it. Um, you know, if you have paintings and stuff like that, you really don't have to varnish it. But if you do want to protect it from a few things, you want to protect it from dust and from um, UV rays because it'll fade the colors. Now a professional paint should have really good pigment so it's not that big of an issue but painters will still put a coat of varnish on top to protect it and it's a UV uh, specific um, varnish so this is a Krylon you can get this at probably at Walmart I got this from the art store and I got like free delivery and with some other supplies so this can when I use it for my paintings usually what I do and I use this for color pencil as well I do a light spray of this a very very fine mist and then I go over with like a liquid varnish paint so what that does is it stops anything from bleeding or spreading but anyway the, this is perfect for sealing the buttons with the paint so that they don't come off because you're wearing the, these right so the, you're going to get a lot of rubbing and stuff so you do want to protect the uh, the acrylic paint um, and I just want to say like I, I've i been looking into using um, vintage patina I just find it's like really expensive for what it is now the vintage as far as I know has metal in the paint so that it adheres better to the metal in the button. I'm guessing that's what the idea is, so that it makes it a little more permanent. Um, I don't know. I feel like the acrylic does the same thing. If you have any idea or opinion about that, let me know. Um, you know, I'm open to that. The thing that I feel right now is it's super expensive. It doesn't have the colors that I want. And I think this is more accessible to anybody. And you just turned your, maybe if you have 10 different styles of buttons, you just turn them into like multiples of buttons and just really can highlight what you're making with it. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So there's those two. Um, there's that one. I think I mentioned how you can kind of see the shine in the middle. So this really needed a second coat because that ended up getting wiped off when I wiped it with the paper towel. So I'll probably go in there and put another coat and then spray it with the varnish and then polish it. So with the varnish, 
you can polish the buttons, which we're going to do right now, um, without varnishing it, and then varnish it, and then polish again, because you're going to get some dulling of the shiny part. Um, it won't do any damage to anything. The only reason I'm doing it in this order, like I could go ahead and spray these with varnish, these unfinished ones, and then it'll all come off with the um, steel wool. But I'm in my office. I don't want to spray these indoors. Um, that You really need to use this outside because it's a fine mist and you will breathe it in. So just to protect yourself. So that's, you can see how that really matches this bracelet and then I did one here this style with the black paint and that really popped the design of the Celtic knot and the final one I want to show you is this one here with the green patina on the sand dollar and it really matches the leather so that's why I'm doing all these crazy painting jobs Oh, hi, I got interrupted there. So let's get, go ahead. So this is the steel wool. So it comes in these kind of round little pillows in a big bag and you get it from the uh, hardware store. Um, this is what they call 0000. That's like the, um, the finest you can get. And probably, I'm not sure, you could probably use one that's a little um, not as fine but uh, it seems to be working well for these so let's start with this silver one and I have a piece that I've been working on so it's all compressed and everything let's just go ahead there <laughs> you can see how it's <laughs> let me uh, get the right See how it really shines it up. There is some spots where there's like paint there. And part of my issue is my this thumb. So and you can see here there's filings from it. So be careful where you're doing this. Um, initially I was doing this over my beading mat and I, you know I was able to just put it over the garbage can and tap it and get rid of some of the stuff but just so you're aware you don't want these filings in your clothes or stuff like that so and I am gonna you know you can see some of the paint on the edge it's not that big a deal. You can leave it there if you want. I like to pull it off. You're not going to see much of that anyway on your bracelet. Let's see what we have. So there is a little spot here. maybe a bit here there so that is done so I would you can kind of see the difference oh let me show you the other button so you know know what you're looking at so there's the difference it, it's kind of hard to see on the camera because they're so shiny but so you can see the black patina on this one and it looks a bit dull now it, you can actually I, I'll take that one and I'll shine it up a bit too so that's something I figured out when I was doing these is that maybe I should be polishing my buttons when I get them so you can really look at that that just makes that pop so there we go beautiful okay so that that one's done let's go to this one we should really see a difference now as you get darker you'll see the difference in these guys so 
<laughs> Look at that. Oh, this is fun. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Wowzer. So again, you can, and I mean, some of the paint gets on the inside a bit. You can go in there and take that off if you want. It just like comes off so easy. So I'll just polish the edge a bit. A bit more paint there. And um, I have a special tool that holds buttons. It's a jeweler's tool. And uh, you can use that too. To, but there's the difference. Trying to get it so it doesn't shine as much. There you go. So you can see how you can really make a difference in these buttons. So I'm going to save this one for last. <laughs> and we have this one. Okay, so this went with the orange cord. Look at that already. Do the sides so you see how fast this is like it just slides off and of course that kind of indicates how easy this paint will come off so you do need to varnish it I would if you're and you know what I'll have to test this out maybe make a bracelet with one that hasn't been varnished and uh, that is incredible and then wear it and kind of put it through the paces and see if it holds up but look at that that difference in that pretty spectacular and let me see what against the orange and the beads oh yeah that's going to be amazing. Look at that. Sorry, that's it's awkward. Awkward. There. Okay. Enough messing about. Okay, let's do this blue, light blue. So this one we did multiples of, because I couldn't decide which color. Look at that. Get some more in here. Oh my gosh. Wowzer. Look at that. That's incredible. I'm just going to polish. The side, get rid of that paint. Beautiful. Okay, so I, you know, this might go with this. So there's the dark blue. That might work. I think, again, like I was saying, I have a hard time matching blues. I think it's because there's so many different shades. So let's see how this one looks. You can tell with the double coat of this, it's really, it's a little harder to get off. I'm trying to find a flat spot. I don't want to take any paint off of the middle. Okay. 
in there, almost there. Oh, wow. This might be the run. It really is starting to look like the uh, um, cord. Very nice. Okay, so there's still some. paint where I don't want it near the knots and that's just because I did multiple and you can go in there and pick it with your fingernail or with a tool but that seemed to protect the middle part just checking to make sure I've got it all That looks awesome. Yeah, I think this is probably the one. Okay, I see what I kind of want some of this off on the edge. I have to be careful. I get a little picky about little stuff like that, and then you end up messing up the good stuff. <laughs> okay. there that is perfect it almost has like a purple look to it I think that's going to be the one let me show you the other button it's kind of hard to say we'll see when we put it together how that works out last but not least and let me just demonstrate the difference with these guys look at that that's amazing like I, I just find that it makes the um, the knot that more prominent the other thing too is this looks a bit flat so my, my um, um, paints are not high gloss they're matte so it has like a flat to it once you spray it with the gloss varnish it will shine it up too so your paint will be shinier so that's that so let's see what we've got with this lovely one. Oh, I'm nervous I want to find a flat spot <laughs> But I want all these little dots to be shined up too. So we're going to work on those guys. So this one's a little harder because of the texture. Oh, but it's looking amazing. need a better oh my gosh look at that yikes look at that that's really starting to pop You know what? I did buy a um, an emery board that has the different uh, um, like the different uh, textures for sanding. It kind of looks like the Vintage uh, tool that you use. I should try that actually so some of it's coming off of this edge which is fine I uh, I think it looks good so I'm 
this is really coming along, but it needs a bit more work than... So this is the what I was talking about, one of these guys. Let me see. Find a... I'm trying to decide. Okay, seven. Maybe the four might get in there. And it has, a, it's a bit soft, so you, yeah, this is the, uh, so I may put too much paint, so maybe a lighter coat of paint, but it just needs a little more work. See, this is so the little dots are a bit dull. So I don't know if I need to worry about them too much. I was kind of hoping they'd shine up more, but. I'm probably just being a little picky with this so I need to get it's these top ones that I want to shine up a little more And I'm wondering if I put too much uh, paint at the dulled it a bit, but who knows? <laughs> it still looks incredible. Oh. And I'm sure it's going to look amazing on the uh, bracelet. And the color of the paint, too, like I said, is flat. So once I varnish it, oh, this is hard on my thumb. My appointment's tomorrow morning with the surgeon. Oh, there. So I'm getting in with my nail. So I kind of want them like this kind of shining up here. I might need a new, new uh, piece of wool. So you can see how I get really <laughs> detail oriented. It's really lovely. I didn't need to do this much work, I'm sure. Okay, there. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> let me show you the other one. Oh. That is wild. And here is. That's going to be amazing. Look at that. So I'm, this will be the end of this video, but I am going to um, do the next video I'm making right now is the um, tutorial and I haven't decided which one to use for the tutorial I'd love to do this one 
um, but because the cord's white, it might be harder for you to see the um, um, the macrame weave. So I'll I'll pick one that you can see it better. Maybe the orange one might be easier to see. Okay, so thanks for watching, and um, yeah, don't forget to lacquer these or varnish them uh, to protect them, and then shine them up a bit. And yeah, that's a very cool way to spice up your buttons. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.